Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 12 of Learning Outside the Lines with Colin Glenn or Glenn and Kyle. It doesn't matter. Glenn, how you doing today, man? Doing great, man. How are you? You know, uh, we're, we're, we continue to kind of roll through this, and there are times, just like you, I'm sure, where I'm feeling pretty good. And then there are times where I'm like, man, this is really messed up. When's it going to change? I had yeah. the horrible epiphany yesterday of sitting on my back deck being like, man, what if, like, summer's not really a thing? Right. Like it's the darkest uh, like moment I've actually had in the consideration of all of this, because I was like, what if there is no going to the pool? What if there is no like going on the family vacation? Like what if all that kind of has to get canceled? And while it would be the right thing to do to make sure people live. I just I'm just trying to face realities right now, man. It's uh, that's that was a, that was a weird moment for me. All right. No, I know. Digress. Yeah. We're going to get into like good stuff to talk about. I do want to talk about our guest who's going to be joining us in a little while. He's a good friend of both me and Glenn. Uh, we've called him a colleague and friend for a couple of years now. Uh, Keith Phillips is going to join us. Keith is also a teacher at Lanier. I know we keep going back to the same high school, but we're just going with the network we got, people. You know? Definitely. Uh, Keith yeah. Is yeah. A, fantastic uh abtf teachers so audio visual technology and film but he's also a yearbook teacher um so for those of you that are kind of in those cte or the strange space that is being a yearbook sponsor um this is an episode for you to to kind of uh tease out and kind of learn some of the things he's doing to try to continue to engage his kids all right so before we do that go ahead what what do you have to share with us today man well before you know i just i want to say thank you for being honest too with like a little bit with where you're at because while we do want this to be a super uplifting show and it is most times like it's i think we all deserve to give ourselves a pass to to kind of process some of this so it kind of goes in hand with what i want to share um just to something uh that my students hold on i'm gonna have to edit this uh share sound all right, so that kind of goes in hand in hand with one of the things that my students are doing right now with podcasting is I'm just giving them a license to be honest and be like, kind of like who they are in this moment, like to process all of this. So this is one of the introductions that I listened to this morning with my morning coffee. And those of us that have been teaching a while, we've learned that we actually control what we have to grade and that's like one of the one of the best things about teaching it's like a huge weight but it's also like it's incredible responsibility but it also there's a lot of freedom in that too so being able to to listen to podcasts as a as something I have to like kind of work through with my students as opposed to I don't know some crusty essay right now is is actually really nice but this is this is one of their intros Hey guys, it's Sophie Sampona, and you're listening to my so-called Corona Life. Got the vibes, yeah. Right now, it is March 19th, and I am just going to kind of talk to you about what's going on in my life right now. So we are in the midst of a pandemic right now. This is not exactly what I was planning for when I uh, came into school this year. Um, In this podcast, I'm filming it for school, but I actually think this will be really beneficial and maybe even helpful. I'm going to talk about what it's been like for my family, what's going on right now, what's going on in the news, and what's just going around around me. Um, and I mean, just giving students a space to kind of uh, process some of this is, it, it kind of heals me a little bit to know that they've got this opportunity. Um, you know, I listened to another one that almost made me cry. It was from an athlete's perspective on like how they're feeling right now. And so, I mean, there's definitely highs and lows with it, uh, but it, it just, I don't know, some of them, some of them just make me smile so big. Uh, and I'm just, I'm so proud of my students right now. Like it's crazy. So that's, that's kind of my uplifting moment for the day. Uh, it's, it's it's nice, you know, I mean, I'm, the, the podcast piece that then will be kind of an ongoing theme with us while you're continuing that adventure with your students. So I'm glad that you're able to kind of share that with uh, not just me, but with anybody who watches. Um, my anecdote is pretty quick today. I just want to do kind of a shout out to the work that I'm getting a chance to do with uh, teachers um, that I directly 
support uh, specifically some of my teacher leaders who are stepping up to help do what we're calling units of study. So uh, fun okay. fact, in case you're not part of the career technical education world, uh, we don't get the benefit of being in, uh, uh, you know, collaborative learning teams or PLCs for that matter. Uh, we're really scattered across a, a large district and, and bringing everybody together can be difficult um, or being able to support one another. And so in this case, these teacher leaders are developing these kind of four or five digital lessons that kind of build upon each other uh, to help teachers who are kind of in need, right? So the teachers who are like, hey, I need something that's kind of plug and play, but it's standards based and it's going to help my students move in their progression. That's what these units are. And so I've got to spend a lot of really quality time digitally with these teacher leaders, providing them feedback, talking through and, and some of the epiphanies that these teacher leaders are having just about like, oh, like that's what I should think about when I'm developing my rubric or that's how I need to make sure my learning target is tied to how I'm kind of obsessing or, or giving feedback to students. And it's just these really yeah. quick moments of, you know, we don't get to have these discussions because life is usually going 100 miles an hour and this has forced us all to slow down a little bit, right? Yeah, definitely. You know? And really be reflective because I think one of the big trends we're seeing is what works now. It also is what's best when we when we do get to return to normal. Yep. You know, um, because like yeah, that's that is the big takeaway. So that's really cool. All right. Well, as we always do, we're going to jump into what we uh, do before we kind of get into our special guest, and that is the uh, digital teaching hack. So, Glenn, what are we doing today, man? Well, I want to just take us back to uh, Padlet one more time. Uh, one of the things that I think teachers kind of forget about, um, I know I, I've done this a million times, is I've done Padlets as a one shot. So it's like a one time thing where students kind of interact in this digital space on Padlet and they respond to whatever you've put in front of them and then we go back and grade it or we don't and then that's kind of it like it just disappears well one of the nice things about padlet forcing you to only have three is i was like huh i wonder if i could have my students revisit the same padlet a couple times and kind of add to it so this is one of the tools i used uh, for developing community norms in the classroom and i just asked these these four questions from my students but i've done it at strategic times so I asked them these questions before we got started and like at the very beginning of DLD. And then I asked them these questions again before they left for spring break. And I had them kind of add to it and curate it a little bit and respond again with what's changed. And then finally, when we went to actually develop our formal community norms, I had them go through and kind of vote on their favorites so we used a thumbs up, thumbs down method of just kind of like this one got 16 upvotes. I need to be more productive and stop procrastinating. So that resonated with 16 different students who all click that upvote. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's kind of, again, a tool to help close some of that space because obviously like 11 people in the class had the same feeling. And right now when we're feeling really isolated and alone, helping our students realize that they're, they have a lot of the same needs and the same feelings makes people feel by nature a lot less alone. Um, it's also a really cool tool for me to go back and give some feedback so I can sit here, the student that just said nothing that they need from me, I can be like, all right, well, it's great to hear from you. Let me know if anything changes. And that student will get a notification that I, I that I gave them that response and they literally can come back to this like we'll probably use the same tool again maybe a couple of weeks from now as we do our second podcast as a group so I just wanted to share that kind of as a deeper dive like we're all the time trying to find new tools but sometimes especially now kind of recycling a tool differently can be just as powerful yeah yep no doubt um and I think that that that's going to be important. I think as we go through this, we may be coming back to these tools as we already have and continue to kind of show ways that they can be used that uh, may not be thought of upon first glance or first use. Right. Definitely. Definitely. So, yeah. Well, without cool further beans. ado, we're going to get into part two. Uh, what's the good word? 
So what's the good word is our opportunity to bring on a guest. Um, thankfully, again, people have been more than willing to come on with us. We have a really wonderful network of friends and colleagues that are in the educational world that are bringing their flavor, their knowledge, their voice, their ideas, and their lens of what's going on right now uh, to this space. And we're going to continue to do that. We're going to keep trying to bring multiple perspectives. So uh, Keith Phillips is our guest today. So again, Keith is a audiovisual technology and film teacher, as well as a yearbook teacher at Lanier High School. Um, for years, Keith has been able to kind of pioneer uh, how to get students to collaborate digitally while also even being in a physical space together. And so part of hopefully what he'll get a chance to talk about today is how he's continuing that obviously now that he can't even be physically connected to his students uh, the way that he had been. And again, the unique challenge of finishing up a yearbook and somehow distributing it in a time where again you're not in a physical school building um, i think will, will be interesting too so keith we're going to go ahead and bring it on right now sir Woo! how are you buddy hello i'm doing hey. well good yeah. to see you man so we're uh we're in in a continu continued state of flux with everything that we're doing right now but it's good to see your face man i'm glad you could join us today yeah glad to be here yeah Woo! Uh, so, Keith, I kind of gave an introduction to you, but uh, just so people kind of know, how long have you been teaching at this point? I have been teaching for five years, five and a half. Yep. So I, I think that's important because like in the CT world, career in tech ed, we have a lot of people that come from industry. And so that was part of your background. You know, uh, you you for a long you had different jobs. Like you weren't necessarily going to be an educator, and then uh, you went into this world. So hopefully, Whoops. you haven't regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> I have not, not yet. Uh, all right, so let's kind of get into it. Um, so the first question that uh, that I have that I wanted to kind of bring to you, to the table with you is uh, how are you kind of engaging students collaboratively after having to go digital, um, and specifically maybe even what kind of tools are you using to try to do that. Well, thankfully, since my methodology coming from Piedmont, I was uh, involved in the Fox Fire program there. And one of the things that they always stressed was being purposeful. So it hasn't really, I haven't had to adjust much from my end, like a lot of other teachers that have, aren't used to using technology or digital learning or any of the text software that's out there. Um, so I just knew I had to make an assignment that's purposeful for them because I know where I am on the totem pole as far as academics versus electives. And so I wanted to make sure they were doing something that they could use in the future. So that's why we are also doing a podcast, but they have an option since we are a video class, they do the podcast, which is probably about maybe a third of them are doing a podcast. Majority of them are just doing a vlog, like for Snapchat, Instagram, whatever. And then we also want to make that a little bit more cinematic. So we get some of the narrative storytelling to make it stronger than just somebody talking on the phone. So I think the number one thing to get them engaged is to make sure the assignment is purposeful. If they see the purpose behind it, they're more likely to do it. And I've had several, several students state that in an email back to me saying like, I enjoy this assignment the most. Uh, it's really something that I can't wait to show, you know, later on or whatever. That's cool. Really? So, yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, so part two of that was kind of like around, uh, you know, tools and things that you're trying to use to, to engage yeah. and work through that too. So uh, what uh, what has kind of been the primary go-to? Because you've, you've used lots of tools over the years. What are you focused yeah. on now? Um, last year we used Slack and Trello, both project management. We're in a project management realm with video. And I try and teach the kids project management functions and process so that way if they're not interested in a video they get something out of the class um and that's kind of where it all came from and then i can't stumble upon um base camp from another video teacher that used it in tennessee um she uh, is also doing yearbook too and that's where it came in from so this year i switched to base camp unfortunately i would suggest not using these during digital learning because it takes a lot of practice to use and your students right now would just be overloaded. But if you definitely want to put it on your radar for going into next year, it's definitely very, very helpful. Basecamp is free for educators. So that's also the nice upside there. It doesn't cost any money. You just have to verify that you're an educator and they open it up to you. 
So I'll go in and show you how we use it. Yeah, very cool. Because like as someone who's, I mean, I played around with it a little bit, but I know a lot of our, our viewers might not really understand what project management is from an education perspective and like kind of how that's used to help motivate students. Right. Um, so right now you can see we have uh, yearbook sales. We have linear productions, which is my video two and video three classes. And we have some other assignments that we were doing. Uh, and I reopened the team just so you could see how we were using it during when our yearbook was being worked on. Um, thankfully, I did do this earlier and this saved our butts this year with the deadline coming up. Our deadline was a week sooner this year and it occurred, our deadline was the first Monday of digital learning. So right when we didn't have anything, we didn't know what was going on. So thankfully we already had this in place. So since this was in place, students were, we were pretty much communicating through yearbook, our chat, and I'll show you some of the things that we did. Um, but this is where we just submitted it. So I, sh I showed them the snapshot and they were special shout out to the students that worked their tails off over the weekend um, working on it. And it was just a very simple communication tool to where we could really get, you know, these are captions we got from text messages from various players and um, students. So there's a lot of different things here that we, we were able to do. We pr pretty much communicated uh, one to one here. Um, as far as once we got that done, um, then we just switched to sales. So the first assignment that we did was um, social media ad for Twitter, Facebook, whatever the whatever uh, format they wanted to make it in. They could use whatever platform they are familiar with, whether it was Adobe Spark, Microsoft Word, Publisher, Photoshop, whatever they want to use. And then we use those for uh, our ads, we I posted one earlier this week from um, Meredith, it's right here. Um, so that way we can try and just keep it in everybody's mind because we know it's not gonna be in their mind right now. And then the last thing that we started this week, which actually started off pretty well yesterday, was individual sales. So I would say, I would highly suggest doing this. This is the first year we've done it. It might be something that I continue on into next year. Uh, it's just letting students know that if they're in the book three or more times that they should buy one, right? Just because a lot of kids don't want to buy one if they're not in the book. So yeah. there's over, there's over, I think three, 400 names that popped that populated and we don't have 400 books left to sell. So even if we get half of that, we'll be sold out again and there will be three years in a row. Um, That's so, amazing. So, so basically you're, be, Oh, sorry. What you're saying is you're targeting like individual people mm -hmm. to, yeah. to basically just like you would. it too. Just like that's you cool. would in the real world. They're working in the sales department right now. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's basically what they're, they are. They have, I divided up um, the, the report into sections. Each student has about 15 names roughly. And those are the 15. Thankfully, the system we work in has uses Gmail for, uh, email so you don't have to know the student's name or what their email is or their email you just type in their name and it sends it right to them um, we have a process in place for you know the john smiths of the world where there's 20 of them in the county so yeah. i just have to find their id for that and they're gonna they they just need to communicate that to me so we have an entire process for that um and then the last two days last two days we, we sold about 20 books already and only had about 20 out of 45 students do the assignment right now. That's cool. That's I mean, really cool. It, it makes me think like, you know, I mean, this is a perfect application in marketing too, right? So like yep. in an ideal world, had we been back, I guess, in regular school times or, or maybe even thinking about the future, like how you partner with your marketing teacher, you know, in your, uh, uh, in your, in your school to be able to do this too, because the kids are getting the exact same sort of exposure. And like you said, it's incredibly authentic The targeted ad, basically, mm -hmm. uh, figuring out who how you target that. Who <laughs> target um, I think mean, that's great advice that's for anybody else who's an advisor right now, trying to figure out how to get this book sold. Um, you know, that's uh, good advice to share is all. I'm saying. Yeah. That's really cool. That's um, beautiful. Man. Well, one of the other things that I wanted you to get a chance to talk about before all of this happened, uh, you know, Keith, 
you had been working with your level threes, really almost down to your level ones, about this whole uh, big student-based production uh, that had been brainstormed, and it took tons of pre-production. And then in February, you know, you all went into a local studio called Aries Studios in uh, Lawrenceville, and they were very kind and gave the set to you for a day. And your kids went in and did, you know, mm-hmm. director, producer, um, cameraman, uh, you know, or camera person, I should say. And, uh, you know, you had your actors and you were working with the drama department at the school to do that. There, there was this whole, uh, it was extraordinary, you know, and you had gotten yeah. the funds to get them on a bus to get down there for the day to, to do this application of their learning. So I know that that's been in a weird space, but I really want to give you a chance to talk about uh anything I didn't just say that you think people should know about it. And then two, what's the state of the project? And one of the things I'll do while you're doing that is I'll kind of show a couple of photos of what this place looks like. Okay. Uh, well, it was an awesome experience. The kids loved it. Um, I had several students come up and thank me for the opportunity and the experience and all that, which was cool. Um, right now, the problem is we, at the moment the digital learning happened, we still had to do some interviews. It's, in the, it's like, a, it, yes, it's a space fi- sp- uh, science fiction film that involves in space, but the kids wanted to shoot it in the style of the office. So there's interviews in, the, in it. We did not have time to do all the interviews on our second day uh, there. Uh, we had about 20 kids volunteer on a Saturday morning at 6 a.m. to film half of their day. We were done. We were done there at one o'clock. So they volunteered their time uh, from six to one on a Saturday <laughs> uh, to try and finish it. And unfortunately, not all the actors were available during that time. So we couldn't do all the interviews. So we did do some. We did a couple, and we did. We set up. Um, we tried to film a couple blank slates so that way we could green screen it. Um, so that was what the process we were in with before we left. We got the green screen all set up, all all uh, nice and straight and everything like that. And then de- this happened. So now, right now, um, our editor is still working on it. He has the footage on an external drive that we gave him. Um, I have a VFX team that is uploaded their finished files. So we just have to add the camera movements in it. Uh, to make it look, make sure people know like, Hey, it's space. We're flying through space. So there's like a little red planet and stuff like that. Um, so they're working on the VFX side and then I'll have another person ready to go do the color grading. But the only issue we have right now that's going to potentially delay the project is those interviews. So if we just, if my goal is to have everything and everything that we have currently, we can edit is put together with possible gaps for those interviews. And then whenever this does come off, then we'll do, hopefully we can finish those interviews. Cause most of the actors don't graduate this year. There's only one actor that graduates that will be tougher to get only because she'll be graduating from linear, but everybody else should be returning. So we should still be able to do it. We just gotta make sure hopefully their hairstyle is the same. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so hopefully we're a space hat. That's the case. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Like, so, what was that one character who had like the really big hat? Uh, it's been oh, forever. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get so much hate mail from all of our fans that are obsessed with Star Trek, and they're gonna they're gonna be really mad at me for not knowing the character's name. That I, I see it. Yeah. I mean, Sorry. for what it's Sorry. for what it's worth, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> While I don't think it's a standard, uh, what a great way to have a chance to talk about like reshoots, right? And what happens in the real movie mm-hmm. industry where people have to go back months later yeah. to reshoot a scene that was shot months earlier uh, to try to get continuity, right? And and, yeah. and and be able to put that into the narrative. So very, very, uh, very real, you know? Yeah. All uh, experience. But just, you know, kudos to your kids and, and kudos to you as a teacher to, to, to help them see that through. And, you know, how amazing and how motivating it can be for a student when, again, they can see, here's the application. What I'm learning, yeah. this is as real life as it gets. So and then we do plan on doing a behind the scenes stuff that um, that videos we, we the editor has it, the different person, different person in the class. Yep. Um, and then we do. I just need to try and get in touch with the various people that we still need to get videos from. That doesn't have to be in front of a green screen, so that they can easily just do that with their phone, just in a nice setup. So, love it, man. 
Well, hey, let's, cool. uh, let's get into our outro for the day. Thank you for everybody who's been watching and hanging out with us. We hope that you enjoyed Keith as a guest and a chance to hear what he's been talking about, both as an ABTF teacher and as a yearbook teacher in the extraordinary time we find ourselves in. So really excited. Our outro today is, is just something kind of fun that uh, the internet gifted me, I should say, and really is a gift to everybody. Uh, but there's a, there's a gentleman who uh, uh, basically takes Dr. Dre beats and then a Dr. Seuss uh, book and wraps the book to Dr. Dre beats. So without further ado, um, I am going to make sure that you guys have as much enjoyment out of it as I do. Uh, these can be pretty long because of the books, the book links. So we won't listen to all of them by any means, but check this out. Hi, I'm Wes, and today I will be rapping Fox and Socks by Dr. Seuss. Okay. Take it slowly. This book is dangerous. Fox socks, box knocks, knocks in box and fox and socks, knocks on fox and socks in box, socks on knocks and knocks in box, fox and socks on box on knocks. Chicks with bricks come, chicks with blocks come, chicks with bricks and blocks and clocks come. Look, sir, look, sir, Mr. Knox, sir. Let's do tricks with bricks and blocks, sir. Let's do tricks with chicks and clocks, sir. First, don't make a quick trick, brick stack. They don't make a quick trick block stack. You can make a quick trick chick stack. You can make a quick trick clock stack. And here's a new trick, Miss. Beatles battle beetles in a puddle paddle battle in the beetle battle puddle is a puddle in a bottle. They call this a tweedle beetle bottle puddle paddle battle muddle. And when beetles bite these beetles in the bottle with the paddles and the bottles on a puddle and the puddles eating noodles, they call this a muddle puddle tweedle poodle beetle needle bottle paddle battle. Wait a minute, Mr. Socks. All right, so I highly recommend checking it out. Um, gentleman's new name is uh, Wes Tank, and he's got a couple of these videos he's already created. Uh, I think it's super uh, fun and charming. So uh, something fun. Uh, my daughter actually sat and watched a couple of them, and she was just fascinated, right? So, <laughs> all right. That's cool. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us for another episode of Learning Outside the Lines with Colin Glenn or Glenn and Kyle. It doesn't matter. Keith, thank you again for joining us. Uh, we're going to keep shooting things out to you as long as you're willing to watch and connect with us. If you think you might be a good guest, reach out to us as well. You can find me on Twitter at, at the Prof Jones. And I'm Glenn Rhodes at GChant668. All right. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again soon.